I'm Adam Booth, and I have a YouTube channel called A Bomb 79, where I create YouTube machining videos, metalworking videos, things of that nature, and I also uh, create some outside the shop videos. Sometimes we do a little barbecue, or sometimes we get out on the road and do a little bit of adventuring, seeing the local sites, and sharing with the world what it's like living on the Gulf Coast here in Florida. I am the girlfriend. <laughs> I do not have a YouTube channel, but I like being on his. It's really fun. We met online. Yes, we did meet online, and I'm very happy that I met you. I'm and, very happy that you. And uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where we met, but we found each other. We did. And I think we complement each other really well. We both are hard workers. We both stay very busy with our with our work, True. and we enjoy spending time with each other when we can. And Abby seems to really enjoy the the film work and the the photography, the videography, and everything involved with making YouTube videos and being part of social media stuff like that. And we enjoy spending time together. And the group of people that we've met so far that I've met through you has been incredible. It's the most incredible group of people I've, I believe I've ever met in my life. So that's been really special. Yeah, it's a great, great group of people out there. Great community. Just, just the metalworking community. Professionally for my career, I run a marketing agency. Um, it's a family business, uh, which is really fun and really difficult at the same time. Um, I've been doing it for about 13 years. Um, I'm a graphic designer and uh, marketing, PR, event planning, you name it, I think I've probably done it work-wise. So it's really fun and creative. I get paid to do artwork. It's unfair, but somebody has to do it. You do some great artwork. <laughs> I've seen you. some of it. Thank you. I love doing it. Every single day is different and um, it's wonderful. It's a family business. Uh, my father is... Uh, has his PhD in veterinary pathology, so we do a lot of animal health work, which is um, sort of a unique niche, I think. So uh, cows, pigs, chickens, cows pay my mortgage every month, and I am a fan of that. So, yeah, it's really fun. Well, we, we talk each week about what we want to do and how we want to spend our time with each other. Uh, we, we talk about our schedules. Abby stays very active with her work, and she travels quite a bit. So we, we have to plan a lot of stuff out. You know, we, we look at the calendar and we say, hey, how about this weekend we go here, we go do this. Uh, sometimes even if it's just one day, a lot of times uh, a Sunday works really good for us because for me, I try to spend most of a Saturday as a, like a normal work day at home in my own shop, making sure my YouTube videos are ready for release time on Saturday, you know, and, and sometimes I just need to get some work done. I have jobs in there. Sometimes I have some customer jobs. So we'll try to plan it out to maybe on a Sunday, we're going to get out, we're going to get in the car, we're going to take a drive, we're going to go somewhere. And then other times we just have to talk to each other and say, no, I'm busy. I got this going on this weekend. You're going to be busy this weekend. So we try to figure out the, the best time in the future that we can take some time together and do what we want to do. Go and spend the day together or spend the weekend together. That's an another reason why we do the adventures too, because we want to, mm -hmm. but also because you get to work yeah. while we're out doing things together. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, she, she brings up a good point because uh, I've mentioned this before that doing the adventure side the, the adventure videos of my channel is something that I do for fun. It, it really is fun. I've, I've got an audience that is there watching metalworking and machining, and many of those subscribers and viewers like seeing this area of the Gulf Coast. They like to see Florida. They're curious about it. They're, ne they're never going to see this area. You know? So we have viewers that are overseas you know, in other countries that they're never going to travel here, so they really appreciate us getting out and showing the sights around around town here and so it's it's part of what I enjoy to do I like taking video and I like taking pictures to share with everybody 
what we get to see. And on top of that, we get to go to cool places and see, see, you know, the forts and historical sites, the beaches, all kinds of cool places out there to see. And me and Abby get very excited about being able to plan, hey, let's go here, let's go there, places that we've never been to before. And we get to do that. You know, so a lot of the, a lot of the viewers have really come to like you and enjoy seeing you on the videos, and and we have a lot of people that say, "Hey, when are we going to see some little Adams or some little Abbeys running, running around?" Well, I mean, we haven't been we haven't been together that long yet, but it's approaching a year. But we uh, we really care about each other, and and uh, we want to be happy together. The I think for me personally, and I'm not speaking for Abby here, that having children was never a very high priority for me personally. Uh, growing up, I just, I was into other things. I enjoyed, uh, I just enjoyed doing what I like to do. It used to be other things. Now it's my work. I'm, I'm really involved with my work. Two jobs, sometimes you can consider it three jobs. I stay busy in my shop and I stay busy doing, doing things that I want to do. And it's just never really been something that I've had a high desire to do is to have kids. Now, now saying that, that if I if I did have a child, I would be a great father to that child, and and I and I would enjoy it. I know it, but uh, it's not something that I'm planning on doing. Can we get a dog? Absolutely. Okay. We can get a dog. <laughs> now. What type of dog? What type of dog? That's going to be a challenge right yeah, there, because we we have some differences on. Uh, sure. I'd like to have another Stella, or maybe even something on the lines of a pit bull type dog. I mean, there's a lot of great dogs out there. You know, I love pit bulls. I love boxers. I love I love those kinds of dogs. See, Abby calls them man dogs. Man dogs. You just want a man dog. You want a man dog. <laughs> <laughs> she always brings her phone over there. Hey, what about this little dog? What about this little dog? I want a fuzzy dog that we can name Mr. Pickles. That is what I want. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. two. Yeah, you want. She wants two dogs, maybe maybe even more. Uh, that yeah. would be okay. A Mr. Pickles and a man dog. You want a Mr. Pickles? Yes. She wants a Mr. Pickles, and she has been trying to decide, and she asked me, what's the best dog that you could call Mr. Pickles? It's got to be fuzzy with pointy ears. Maybe. And I, I call those yappy dogs. No. I don't want a yappy dog. I don't want the dog that's going to be barking every time somebody opens the door. Up. You know you're getting a yappy dog. You I want a fun right. dog that wants to go and play and wrestle with you in the ground, you know, and jump on you and tackle you. You'll get a man dog, and that'll be the most, that'll bark all the time. Uh-huh, yeah, we we'll running around barking. <laughs> you know, I think anyone who works on their craft, wants to do it on their own. I don't really think it matters how okay. wonderful your job is or how secure it is. I think that you always feel like that, you know, you can do it yourself. You can do it, not maybe not better, but just as good or, you know, create it in your way. And I think, you know, Adam and I both share, you know, we want things to be moral and, and I'm not saying that anything that we do is not is not moral but you know I think it's just there's just rules that you want to have in your own business and I so I you know I think we both kind of share that you know desire yeah. but you know it is scary to be on your own in a way but you know I have had thoughts for some time about going out on my own and, and running the shop for myself, you know, just having my own business, and uh, I've had those thoughts ever since I was still working with my dad, you know, full time. That's what I thought. That's what I always thought was going to happen was I was going to take over the shop and run it. And you know, unfortunately, things happened, and I was offered a good job where I work, and now I've been with that company for eight years. It's it's been eight years, and I got to say this there. There is benefits working for a good company. There's there's bad and there's good, but you know we have good benefits there. I have great health care. Uh, the, the pay is very fair, and we have holidays. So things like that can sometimes, from what I hear, be very difficult for somebody that works for themselves. You know, and running your own business. 
Sometimes when you run your own business, it's very hard to take time off and to take a vacation just because you're so busy trying to keep up with what you have to do. So I'm at a point in my career where I'm sort of torn. I like going to work and being able to do what I do, do my work, put the tools down, and I go home, and then I get to do what I want at, at the house. But I love going to the house and after I get out my other job and working on other projects and being able to take my time doing them. I'm not punching the clock. I'm not having to do it in a set amount of time, you know, a set amount of hours, and I get to film it. And share it on YouTube, you know, share it with everybody. And that that's that's what makes it enjoyable and makes it fun. So part of me is scared that if I do go out on my own and I go home to work full time, that part of that is gonna disappear. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna turn into nothing but work. I'm not gonna have time to do video. I I don't know if that would happen. I'm just saying that's one of my that's one of my fears is that I would just be so busy that YouTube would start getting in the way of what I'm trying to do, you know, to earn money and pay my bills and make a living. But it is something that I think about, and I think about it every day. I'm just at a point where I don't know when that's going to happen. Should I say? Yeah, it's it's pretty difficult to to run a business and make sure that you're running a pro you're making a profit at it. And I used to, I worked, I worked with my dad for a very long time and uh, I always watched him and there was, there was plenty of times that we were struggling. He was struggling to make ends meet and be able to give me a paycheck and to pay the bills. So I, I seen what it was like that, you know, the, the difficulties that it takes to run a business and it, it's, it's a lot of hard work. And I think that with my experience as a younger person working with dad, I got to experience a lot of that and see what it, what it's going to take to run a business. And now since I stepped outside of that and I'm working for somebody else, I've gained even more experience, even with my work. And, I'm, and I've experienced what it takes to actually run a business. You know, I think when you, when every day you work for the paycheck that you will receive that week. I it's I realize that that's what happens every day when you go to your job. But I mean, I literally mean if I don't get this project done, I do not make a paycheck. I think that ends up changing the way that you approach your work, the way that the amount of hours that you work, um, how personal you take it. I think it's difficult not to take it personal, especially when it's a family um, or your own business. Um, and there are some wonderful, wonderful things about that and some very, very difficult things about that as well. But I think you have to be patient and know that it just ebbs and flows and you have to learn to stick with it. And, you know, I think the work ethic is the most important thing because, like I said, you don't get paid if you don't do the work. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you work hard, as hard as you can, and, you know, eventually... You make money, <laughs> hopefully. Work, work ethic there was a, was a great comment, and that's something that I have learned over the years. I, I, I can't say that I used to be the, the hardest worker out there. You know, I, I, when I was younger, I had other things I wanted to do, but I, I think I've learned what the importance of working hard and having the proper work ethic. you got to get the job done so that you can get paid, you know. And, and do on. it correctly, so mm -hmm. you get to do other projects right. and can you know and do a good job at it. Correct. You know, be be proud of what you do, and what I what I say is to take ownership. Absolutely. You know, you you're given a, a task, a job to do. You know, in my case, I have to make a part. I want that part to be the best looking part that I can make, so that I impress that customer and I impress others that see that part. And that's what, that's how you sell yourself. Yes. You know, so that's going to lead to more work, better reputation. I learned, I learned a lot of great stuff from my dad and, and my granddad both. And I think that I took what I learned and I went beyond what my dad taught me. He taught me the basics. He taught me how to run a lathe, how to run a mill, and all the little things in between on, on metalworking. But I would... I would go home and study it even more. 
I would read books about machine work, about tools, about machines, about the history of machining. I would, I would take that and I believe that's what helped make me a better machinist than just what my dad and my granddad taught me. Well, I think you have to make it your own in order to make it make you make yourself happy. I mean, otherwise it's their, you know, their work and, you know, but when you take what they've given you and you go out and make it your own, yeah. that is what when, you know, art starts happening. You know, I think it's mm -hmm. it's actually important to you and it, you know, you can see things, especially over a long period of time, how they've changed. I've learned so much from my parents, both. It's, I've been so lucky to have, you know, them in my life and to be able to learn. And I, I learn from them every day still. And it's wonderful. But, you know, they also learn from me now. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a really cool thing. Well, I can say the same for my dad as well. Because as, as the years progressed, I got better and better at what I did. And I eventually became my dad's go-to guy to do all the work. I remember at one point we still had a we still had an employee there and he was an excellent machinist but I got to be the, the one that my dad relied on to get stuff done relied solely on me to the point where he didn't have to worry about the quality of work that was getting done he just expected it to be done and he'd get the job done and get it out the door you know so he was he was taking care of answering the phones and giving people quotes and things like that, you know, and I was out in the shop getting the work done and I believe that I got to the point where I personally felt like I was probably surpassing my dad on his skill level. I think just because of the quality that I tried to put out, um, making things pretty, having the right surface finishes, having things on the right diameters, you know, just Putting out really high quality work, nice looking pieces that the customers really liked and appreciated. I think I took that to a level beyond what my dad used to do. And you know, we just kind of had a conversation a couple weeks ago. We both started at the bottom. We mm -hmm. both, you know, I answered phones, I made copies, I, you know, the, I made phone calls. I was calls. the muscle. Yeah, and so we, we both, I mean, I think a lot of people think if you do a family business, oh, you know, the, her daughter, you know, and it's, I think we probably have both worked harder than anyone else in any other kind of job just to, because you come from the bottom and, but, you know, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way because now I can do anything in the business because I've done all of it. So it's, it's, you know, that's a really great thing. Things did seem to change whenever I lost my dad. It was, it was a very sudden and unexpected event in my life, I, I had no idea that that was going to happen. I know nobody ever does, but it, it really was an unexpected, unfortunate time that uh, I lost my dad. And it was it was right when I was starting doing my YouTube channel. And at that particular time, I was thinking that I was going to be running a you know a part time shop, continue to work for customers. Uh, but then I had started getting into doing YouTube videos, and I was really excited about. It sharing that with dad because dad was retired at that point so he had plenty of time to watch the videos and i was always excited about making a new video and putting it on youtube and then calling dad and saying dad i got a new video on youtube i want to check it out see what you think you know and he started getting into it he started enjoying it you know so he was he was watching all my videos and then he learned about other youtube creators out there that I introduced him to, and he was enjoying watching all these other guys. So for Dad, it was a great way to be able to continue watching and seeing machine work, the same kind of stuff that we, we did and he did, without actually being in the shop doing it. So that, that had, he had just started you know, watching YouTube and, and whenever I lost him, and I was expecting him to be down there in the shop, you know, hanging out, sitting on the stool, helping me get jobs done every now and then and give me some advice because I used to always call him up and ask him his opinion on how to do something whenever I had started working at the other place. So it was uh, it was unexpected and very unfortunate, but I, I, was, I was hoping that he was going to be hanging around for a while and hanging out at the shop and I was going to get him on some videos and, and he was going to be part of the channel, you know, so it, it upset me and it was, and it hurt, it hurt for a while. But uh, I've, I've learned to, 
I've learned to live with it and accept it and move on with my life. And I think things are a lot better now. So whenever I had started working at the, at the other place there, a couple of years had went by and that was whenever dad, he had a, he had a heart complication and we had to take him to the hospital and he had to have some surgery done. But it was at that point that he decided he was ready to retire. So what we had done was he, he asked me if I wanted to move some of the machines down to my garage and be able to do a little bit of work out of the, out of the shop there. And I was like, absolutely. Yes. So we started talking about what machines that we were going to keep basically. And that list kept growing and growing, you know, and every time he would suggest one, I'm like, I wasn't going to argue with him. I was like, Yes. Yeah, I'll take that down there, you know, because it was originally just going to be the Victor lathe and Dual Mill and the welding machine, and that was pretty much it. And then you know, so we had a growing list. So he decided to retire, and he wanted to kind of downsize the shop and me move what was left to my place and whatever I wanted to do, do it down there. And his plan was to sell the house where he was living, the property, and he wanted to buy something or move into like a apartment something smaller that he didn't have to worry about maintaining as he was getting into his older older days there but we ended up selling some of the machines to motion where i work and they they acquired some and then we sold the big lathe to another company in town that, that wanted the big lathe and there was a couple other small things here and there that we had sold that i didn't have room for and everything else the machines that you see we kept and I moved to my shop. And since then I have acquired a couple more machines such as the Kearney and Trekker mill, uh, another bandsaw out there. So there's a few things that I've, that I've acquired, but a lot of the tools and the machines that you see in my videos, I got from my dad. They were, they were handed down, they were passed down to me. And, you know, it's just so thankful for dad, you know, for giving me all those, all those machines and, and tools so that I can keep doing what I do. I'm, I'm very, I'm very fortunate to have that. So we've been kind of talking about another place to live and nice big piece of property with maybe a big shop on it, right? Let's just get a Walmart, an old Walmart building. <laughs> old Walmart Just building. totally fill the whole thing. There you go, man. No That's, problem. That should be plenty of shop space yeah. right there. <laughs> You know, Abby and I, we, we, we really care about each other. You know, we want to be, we want to be with each other. And so no, I'm just kidding. she's <laughs> maybe me. No. Abby has her own place and I have my own place, you know, and we make it work and it works great for us. Uh, I just decided to, I wanted to continue working out of my shop for a while. So I'm investing a little bit of money into what I have to try to make it a better shop. So, you know, I had that, that had that, roof built onto the shop. I decided to do the enclosure there. So that's what I'm working on now is to get that done. Give me some more square footage to kind of spread my feet a little bit in the shop, spread some of the machines out. I, I would like to acquire a bigger lathe. That's one of my, there's the, there's the secret right there. I want to get a big lathe, a long bed lathe, and try to stuff it in that shop so that I have some larger capabilities in there. And that's one of my goals that I've been trying to reach for this current shop. I don't think but, anyone's going to be surprised. And I think some of them hope to see that. I can <laughs> do some heavy chip making right there in my own shop. But maybe maybe get to that point where I can find that bigger lay that I want. I, I, have, I have in my mind what I want and uh, be able to do a little bit more work. I'm kind of partial to Monarchs and American Pacemakers. So kind of what I got my sights on. That's what you should get then. A little more specifically, maybe 22 to 25 inch swing, 144 inch bed length, center to center. I'd like something like that. So maybe just keep working out of my shop for a while. I don't know how long that's going to be. Maybe a couple years, maybe more. I don't know. And we might get to the point where we can acquire a better piece of property, you know, something that... With a pool. Something with a pool <laughs> and, a, and a pool boy to keep it clean. And two dogs. And two dogs. And then maybe I can have me a nice big shop out there as well, you know. I want uh, I want a big 
I would like, I'd be happy with a metal building, a nice big metal building that I can drive a truck through the center of it. I want to be able to pull right in the door, unload, and pull out. That's, that's how I want my shop set up. So something nice and big where there's plenty of room for machine shops, welding, fab, all that kind of stuff. And a little painter area in the corner for me. Yes, exactly. We're going we're gonna to have a, an, Airbnb, an area there for Abby okay, nice. for all her arts and crafts. And she's going to be right out there in the shop working alongside me. I have absolutely zero plans of leaving the business. I think we are trying to grow our business, actually. Um, things are always changing, especially in marketing. Um, so I'm not sure where we're going to go. But um, the good thing is, is I work out of my house. So it doesn't matter where I am in the country, in the world. It doesn't make a difference. I get to work from wherever. So I take full, full advantage of that. And um, it opens me up to do whatever I want. And I think that's probably my favorite thing about it. If I worked for someone else, uh, not my family, I would lose that. And I think it would probably crush me so <laughs> it's great being able to go somewhere and take your laptop with you and pull it out and go right back to work I have a little hot spot I can do it in the car no one ever knows where I am it's yep. it's um, wonderful so I'm never caged in <laughs> we don't know where the new shop and house is going to be in that we, we were talking about Alabama we were pretty serious we were looking at properties over over in the Baldwin County area it's beautiful over there you know country it's there's a lot of farmland but I, we, we really don't know. I mean, so much changes. And I, I know that she wants to stay close to her parents as well. I do. And if uh, I can. her. What's that? I do if I can. Yeah. That's right. And I, and I think that her parents have talked about possibly moving in a few years. So that may end up settling her over closer to my area, the Pensacola area. We'll see. So kind of <laughs> hoping maybe we can find something over there that. I think I've said this before, I'm totally open. I want to stay uh, open about it. So uh, I think, you know, man, make it work. I am too. I have a lot of, I have my roots set in Pensacola, obviously, you know, and I have a lot of customers there, but uh, I'm not really too worried about if it's Pensacola, if it's over a little bit more west towards the Mobile area. I'm not really too worried about where it's at. But. I like to be able to pick my roots up and carry them around with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll find we'll find a nice spot that they can continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Big shop. Big shop. We need a okay. big shop. You need a big shop, I know. We'll put you in an area out there right, where you well. can do your painting and your arts. Okay. I promise. I've I've approached Abby about helping me with some marketing for the He can't the, afford me. He cannot afford me. That's what it is. That's that's sorry. Right. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she stays so busy with her work yeah, that it's really difficult to take time out of her work schedule to do stuff for for the A-Bomb 79 network, you know. But the, you did just make me a part, so I owe you. So I'm going to have to do some kind of... Well, I made a part because I care about you. I know. You need I some know. help. I appreciated it. Abby actually needed some machine work done. Mm -hmm. Who would have Who would have thought it? I know. I knew but, someone. I'm glad. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have had to throw it in the trash. Oh, you can find somebody. I think that there will be opportunity in the future for her to help me do some marketing. There's been a lot of ideas. There's been a lot of people come up with ideas and throw them at me. And there's a lot of great stuff out there. It's just, it's a lot of work. And personally, it's just, a lot of it is not something that I want to deal with right now. I just want to focus on my work and Creating videos. You gotta fit it all in. You gotta fit it all in. Uh, you know. You gotta make the time for the marketing. If you make products or you sell products, you know, you gotta ship all that stuff out. I just don't have the time for all that right now, and that's one of the main reasons why I don't try to market simple things. You know, like my own T-shirts and stickers. You know, I, I use somebody else to source that because they have the time to do that. Where I don't, because I'm busy working. So. I think maybe in the future we can work on some marketing and maybe, maybe Abby can give me a hand with that. I have a lot of ideas. She does. She has a <laughs> lot of great ideas too. It's been amazing watching the, the channel grow so organically like it has since I started. I, I've said this so many times. I've just, it's hard to believe. Never expected it to grow the way it did. You know, I just thought I had a few people that were going to be watching the, the videos. But 
it did grow very organically and watching everybody engage in the conversations, in the comments, all of the great people out there that just truly enjoyed the content that I put out there just made me continue to want to do what I'm doing, making the videos and putting them out each week. And I've got weekly videos now that I put out each week and I do that because it's great to have an audience and they're they're expecting that. You know, they, they have something to look forward to each week. Just like if somebody's watching a TV show every every week. You know, you look you know on that day and that time that's the new episode is gonna come on. So that's what I try to do for my 136,000 subscribers. I have people out there that want to tune in every week and see what's going on with Avon, seeing what new projects going on in the shop, maybe see what barbecue we cooked this week or where we went, you know. So that's it's really it really has changed my life for the better. It's I think it's made me a harder worker than I than I used to be. And I, I work a lot of hours, and it's, it's not necessarily hard labor hours, but, I mean, I'm in the shop, and I'm making content, I'm making parts, and then I go inside, and I have to spend hours and hours editing that video to put up on YouTube. I do it because I enjoy it, but I also do it because I have 136,000 subscribers out there that enjoy what I produce. And it is a delicate balance, I think, with you, because y you aren't doing it for money or for fame or anything like Unfortunately, that. Unfortunately, mean, a lot of people think I do do it for and money. And I, I think that, like, when I suggest, you know, maybe you should make this and sell this, you know, that's just not his thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, from a marketing standpoint, and, like, I've got all these ideas and I want this to happen and, you know, I, you can be huge and yeah. <laughs> he doesn't care about any of that. He so. always wants me to come up with something that I can create to sell. But I also, which is a great idea. It is a great know, idea, but it, that's also not you, and that's what makes you great, and that's why you have so many subscribers because I, you're. This is just who you are, and you yeah. do it because you love them and you love this work. I, I enjoy. So I enjoy what it is I do, and I do job shop work. I do repairs. I fix things. I do one job at a time. I don't do production work. Uh, even the small production work I do, I don't necessarily like it, but I enjoy doing the one-off repairs and fixing things, and that, that's what I like. So uh, there's a lot of good ideas. She's had some great ideas. I've had some friends give me some ideas on something that I can market, make, produce, and sell it for a profit. And I love the idea of that, of, you know, trying to make a good profit off of that. But just so you can uh, build your shop, and mm -hmm. you know, it for yeah. to, for it to come back out. For YouTube, not for your own, you know, I just house think that, or whatever. I, mean, I think if I did do that, then it would get in the way of the repair work that I do on a weekly basis, though. So. Yeah.